We'll get back to vaccines in just a second. I do want to get to a new study that we learned about overnight. It shows that antibodies from coronavirus can remain in somebody six months after infection. Um, what does that mean for the vaccine effort and, and for getting out of this pandemic? Six months, it, it seems, you know, look, I'm a layperson, but it, it certainly seems like not great news given that we thought there would be some sort of extended period of immunity following infection. It's important to remember that antibodies are just one part of the immune system equation. We have something called cells, and those T cells are very, very important for controlling infections. So it, it, antibodies are easy to measure. T cell immunity is not. We do know, if you go back to those four seasonal coronaviruses, that people's ability to be reinfected does increase as they get to maybe a year out from their initial infection. So it's likely that people can be reinfected, but those reinfections are going to be very mild, and they're going to probably be a year or so out. And again, remember that T cells play a major role in this. And I do think that with the with the uh, vaccines, we're going to have to do studies, natural history studies, see how long people's immunity lasts, and not just in terms of antibodies, but see, are they getting reinfected upon exposure? What do their T cells look like? So I don't think this changes anything. We knew that coronavirus immunity does wane over time, just like anything does. But I, I'm pretty confident that with people getting some level of immunity, remember, this is just a measurable antibody level that you're talking about. There's still antibodies that you can't measure. They, they're not, they're below the level of detection, and you get exposed to the virus, and they shoot back up. That's what the immune system does. And so I I, I'm not worried about these types of studies. I think that we, we will get out of this through the vaccine and through people being uh, immune to this, and it will cease to be a public health problem in the in the months, uh, in maybe over a year or so to come. Hey, Dr. Adalja, um, I've been eager to talk to you about this uh, since the news came out last Friday. We haven't had a, had a chance to speak about it, but Johnson & Johnson's results of uh, their uh, large late-stage clinical trial, um, the one-shot vaccine, it generated strong protection against COVID-19, 66% uh, efficacy against disease in a large global trial, but it also prevented 85% of severe infections and 100% of hospitalizations and, and deaths. So there's a slew of numbers to go over, but I think that 66%... Um, really tripped up a lot of people who, you know, didn't start following these figures until this pandemic, especially because how it compares to what we saw from uh, BioNTech and, and Pfizer and, and Moderna as well. Uh, but look, 100% of severe of, of hospitalizations and deaths prevented, that's pretty great news, right? Yeah, this is exactly a success in what I was just saying earlier, that what really matters is a vaccine's ability to prevent serious serious infection, hospitalization, and death. And by all those measures, the Johnson Johnson vaccine is a major success. This is a single-dose vaccine. It doesn't have a, a major cold chain requirement. All of that is really going to help get this vaccine into the arms of the people of, of the world. And I think we got spoiled because we saw the Pfizer and Moderna results. And remember, several weeks ago or months ago, we would have accepted a 50% efficacy. That was the FDA benchmark. So there's no way to, to, to minimize the, the impact that this Johnson & Johnson vaccine can have. It is a major success story. Uh, last thing, I, I want to talk about the idea of, of shipping vaccines directly to pharmacies. As our colleagues uh, Emma Cord, Angelica Levito, and Josh Wingrove yesterday reported uh, the president is going to test shipping vaccine directly to pharmacies. I is this the right way to get out of this pandemic? I think getting the vaccine as close to patients and as close to the population as possible is the way through this. And I do think that when you can get a vaccine as easily as you can get a flu vaccine, that means we're turning the corner. Right now, it is very onerous to get a vaccine. People are refreshing websites, almost like they're looking for concert tickets to try and yeah. get an appointment. That's not going to get us out of this. So I do think en enlisting pharmacies is going to be really, really crucial because we want people to be able to get this as simply as possible with no friction, no bureaucracy. And I think that's one way to do it. And we know that pharmacies can deliver vaccines. They they deliver many of our, our uh, regular routine immunizations. Hey, Mitch Adalja, Senior Scholar for the Johns Hopkins Center for Health Security. Dr. Adalja, thank you, as always, for your time. We appreciate it. We should note that the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health is supported by Michael R. Bloomberg, founder of Bloomberg LP and Bloomberg Philanthropies. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.